Now in part two then we're asked to integrate sine squared x with respect to x between the limits pi upon 4 to pi upon 2. Now whenever you've got to integrate a sine squared x term what you need to do is use an identity and that identity is the double angle for cos 2a. Cos 2a hopefully you remember is the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And what we do is we make the sine squared a the subject of this identity. So if I was to add 2 sine squared a to both sides we would have 2 sine squared a plus cos 2a would be identical to 1 and if I subtract cos 2a from both sides we have 2 sine squared a is identical to 1 minus cos 2a and then by dividing by 2 you end up with sine squared a is identical to 1 minus cos 2a all divided by 2. Now I could write that but I must admit I prefer to write this as a half. Okay, So just take that out, a half of 1 minus cos 2a. You'll see why I like to put the half there in a minute because what we do now is we come over to here and we change this integral. We've got the same limits of course so that's the integral from pi upon 4 to pi upon 2. Now in place of sine squared x you'll notice that my a here I'm going to replace with an x. So sine squared x would be a half of 1 minus cos 2x. And because half is a constant, I can pull that half out the front. Alright, and then in here we have 1 minus cos 2x. And don't forget to write the dx on the end. Now I'm in a position to be able to integrate both these two terms. So we've got the half, put some square brackets up. So the integral of 1 with respect to x is going to be x and the integral of minus cos 2x with respect to x should be minus a half sine 2x. And again we have the limits going between pi upon 4 to pi upon 2. So all I need to do now is just substitute my limits in and work that out. So we've got the half, put the square brackets up first of all, pi upon 2 then for the x and then we have minus a half sine of 2 lots of x, 2 lots of pi upon 2 so that's going to be the sine of pi I'll put that in brackets and then we have minus and I'm going to substitute now x for pi upon 4 so we have pi upon 4 and then minus a half times the sine of 2 lots of pi upon 4 so that's going to be pi upon 2. Close the brackets and so now all we need to do is just evaluate these trig functions that we have. We have pi upon 2. Now the sine of pi you should know is 0 so that's going to be minus a half times 0 so that's 0 so I won't bother putting that in. We've now got minus pi upon 4 and inside the bracket here the sine of pi upon 2 or the sine of 90 degrees is 1 so we have minus half times 1 so that's minus a half but then you've got minus minus a half so that's going to be plus a half. So cleaning this up we have a half multiplied by well half pi minus a quarter pi that's going to be a quarter pi or pi over 4 and then plus a half. Now you could leave the answer like that if you wish. You could multiply the brackets out and get pi over 8 plus a quarter or I think the best version of all is to pull 1 8 out as a common 
well not a common factor just to take the lowest common multiple I should say between 8 and 4 which is 1 8 there and just write pi plus 2 in brackets like that. I prefer this answer because it's one term and you just have the one fraction in it as opposed to this one where you've got two terms and two fractions or this is one term but lots of fractions. Anyway, so any one of these answers though would have done and that brings us then to the end of part two and to the end of the question.